All right, more of the wicked heresy is coming from the satanic, demonic, charismatic cult movement that it is. This time you have this same charismatic Jezebel, what's her name, Kat Kerr, uh, charismatic prophetess, uh, you know, kind of like Jezebel in, in Revelation chapter 2, verses 20 to 21, uh, says that after people die, they will have one final chance to accept Christ. See again with the charismatic cult movement that it is, you see, and I call it a cult too, because they, they are a cult. You, you compare it with, you know, other cults like Islam or whatever, they're a cult. It's that simple. And with the charismatic movement, they go by experiences over scripture. And they get these supposed visions from angels, which are actually devil spirits, fallen angels. And they hold to that over scripture. But here you have this charismatic prophetess, uh, what's her name, Kat Kerr, just making sure I was full screen, says that after people die, they'll have one final chance to accept Christ. We're going to see what the, the word of God says about this in a minute. But... This is the product, the fruits of this wicked charismatic movement, this wicked Pentecostal faking of the gifts of the Spirit movement. And they go by their experiences over the Word of God. So, some devil spirit who they think are angels, or even a, a spirit coming to them claiming to be Jesus Christ, comes to them and tells them something that's not in God's Word or contrary to God's Word, or gives them these so, supposed visions of heaven, visions of hell, uh, visions of what Abraham's bosom, maybe, who knows. Uh, that trumps scripture then because we don't need the word of God I mean that's there but we have our experiences it's kind of like the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 15 verses 1 to 9 where they go against the commandments of God for their tradition that simple the, the likes of these, these wicked devils are also talked about in Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13 where you know uh, they, they praise God with their lips but their heart is far from them from him it's that simple but I'm going to show you this uh Kat Kerr, it says here on Protestia.com, when Kat Kerr, our favorite pink-haired charismatic meme bot and doctor, quote-unquote, Michael Brown, approved a pro prophetess, isn't weaving the unbiblical tale of witchcraft and false theology by claiming she has had a picture of thousands of lion-faced angels, angels frog-marching chain demons across the sky in order to go to heaven for judgment, or she's talking about how heaven is filled with 200-foot Sasquatches, unicorns, and 200-foot-high cryptids. You can't make this stuff up, but this is, the, this is the product of this wicked, demonic, charismatic movement and other fantastical creatures. Uh, the result of visiting heaven one a thousands of times, she's repeating some very bad uh, soteriology, uh, so -soter soteriology, interesting word there, which is her view that after a person dies, if someone is out there praying for them, they will come face to face with Christ, having indisputable proof that he exists and have an opportunity to repent and believe. Sounds like purgatory almost. You know, you pray your way out of purgatory. It's eerily similar. But again, where is that in the scripture? But remember, they don't care about scripture. They care about their, their experiences and that trumps the word of God. Uh, speaking to Chief Enabler Steve Schultz on episode 42 of Wednesdays with Kat and, and Steve, uh, Schultz asked when, what happens to pagans who pass away without repenting of their sins and being saved by Christ, if that is the end, uh, or if they get another shot after realizing they were dead? And this is the response, this is how she responds. If he were to suddenly pass away with a heart attack overnight, it is not true that the Lord would appear to him and give him another opportunity. Is it not true that the Lord would appear to him and give him another opportunity? Is that what you've said? She responds, or if this is what this is the question. This is her responding. Uh, so, so basically, she's responding to the question: Is he given a second chance? The pagan that dies in his sins. This is her response. Yes, and there's a reason for him doing that. Now, I'm not going to argue with you about Bible theology. Yeah, because they don't care about the Bible. They go by their experiences. I'm not going to argue about theology, okay? I'm not a pastor. I'm not a teacher. Yeah, but you get all these supposed visions. You know? So, again, just the same Jezebel spirit of Second Kings chapter 9, verse 22, where her witchcrafts are many. Nahum chapter 3, verse 4. You know, the, the uh, harlot seduces the nations with her witchcraft. S same spirit, same wicked, demonic, you know, charismatic spirit. I'm not a teacher, but I do know what the word says. And because Christ himself was willing to go into Abraham's bosom, another name for Abraham's bosom was paradise. How do I know that? Because Christ said to the thief on the cross, you will be with me in paradise. That was that day. Okay. Okay. That was a completely different situation. He's not giving, the thief was already saved. The thief believed on him on the cross. Okay. He went down to Abraham's bosom, 
to paradise and gathered up the Old Testament saints and the thief was there with him. But it's not saying the thief died, was lost, and then got a second chance. It's ridiculous. The thief was already saved when he went down to paradise in Abraham's bosom. That was the day Christ died, and that was the day the thief died. So he was taken to paradise, which is in the middle of the earth. Hell is even below that. Um, no, it's not It's not below that. Uh, Luke 16, 22 to 26 is a gulf between Abraham's bosom and hell. There, there are two separate chambers in the underworld. Uh, so he preached the gospel, and he preached the gospel to everyone there. Yeah. Uh, Kat explains that Jesus preached to Abraham, Moses, and the Old, Te Old Covenant Israelites. It wouldn't be fair that he didn't appear to the others to others in the New Covenant. Okay, we're not in the New Covenant, first of all. The New Covenant is for the Jews. See Hebrews chapter 8, verses 8 to 12. But he went down to Abraham's bosom and gathered up the Old Testament saints. There's nobody in Abraham's bosom anymore. And once you're in hell, you're there. You're not getting out. Okay, again, read Luke, read Luke 16, verses 20, 22 to 26. You know, or just read the whole chapter of Luke 16. You know, the part where the the uh, rich man goes to hell. He knew he's not getting out of there. That's why he's asking Abraham, you know, send send you know send me back so I can warn my family. Send somebody back. You know, paraphrasing of course, but he knew he was not getting out of there. So they pull these obscure examples, and again, it was the Abraham's bosom thing is completely different. So he says, "Oh, why won't?" So it won't be fair if if he didn't appear to others in the new covenant. So he's basically judging God then, essentially. Uh, quote: This is her response. So it wouldn't be really it wouldn't be really right, really right, if these still great people in the earth who believe in God Himself, if Christ wasn't willing to do the same thing for them. That's really the way the Holy Spirit explained it to me. No, it wasn't the Holy Spirit that explained it to you. It was the devils inside of you explaining it to you. Okay. It is it, like she, this is like a kind of subtle attack on God. I'll, I'll put it that way. And I will say this now, I have to add this always, but you have to add it. Actually, Christ will do that for anyone who has someone standing for them. Who ha He has the keys of hell, death in the grave. He uses those keys. It says, as is appointed man wants to die, and then the judgment. That scripture is not talking about the judgment seat of Christ, which is at the end of everything, or the judgment, you know, the great white throne judgment. That judgment is like, it, that's like an immediate thing Christ judges. Then it says, Jesus is asking himself, uh, do I hear the prayers of those who are standing for that person's salvation? How they declared uh, that he would know me? How they stood in the gap for him? Does that give him the right to go to them that are at the time of death? I mean, it, it's vexing reading this because he's, he's just blaspheming God by these wicked statements. Uh, why do you think he he took? Why do you think he took the keys? These are things that most people don't understand because it comes to it comes by revelation. Yeah, your revelation is from devils. You know, I'm going to cover the scriptures just in one second. Just all you charismatic devils out there who may, who may be watching this, don't worry, I'm going to cover the scriptures in a second that she would not show you because your traditions somehow trump scripture. But yes, Christ said to tell you that he doesn't hang them on a hook in heaven, hang them on the hook in heaven, he uses them. Yeah, sure. That's the end of the article. But just, I mean, utter blasphemy. I mean, seriously, judging God and then saying, I mean, there's no nice way to put it. It just blasphemy. Uh, and, and it's funny too because how she says how um how you know oh it wouldn't be fair you know God must be able, she doesn't even know it for sure she just says oh it, it must because of my human logic you know never mind the fact that Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 to 9 says that my ways are higher than your ways my thoughts are higher than your thoughts that's what God says oh no we can we can we can uh, judge God even though his ways aren't his thoughts are higher than our thoughts ridiculous um, when you go to hell you're like if you're lost you're not getting out of there okay let me show you the scriptures that this charismatic witch would not show people. And she is a witch, by the way. Hebrews 9, 27. And as is appointed unto man once to die, once to die, but after this, the judgment. Okay, she covered that scripture, but she didn't really home in on it. Um, why does it mention that, well, you can have some kind of, uh, uh, you know, like a purgatory thing or whatever. You know, if you just pray them, you know, I won't judge them in the lake of fire. No. As is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, and who's from whose face uh, the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which was the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those books. Okay, who are the dead? The people in hell. Those are the people who are dead. So the dead are being judged. They're not given a second chance. 
the dead would judge out of those books. Uh, these things which were written in the books according to their works. Then it goes down there. They're cast into the lake of fire. Uh, Whosoever is not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, let's go to Luke 16. This passage debunks a lot of the charismatic false so supposed visions of hell. Luke chapter 16, verses 22. Um... Yeah, 22 down to verse 31. Sorry, I got a bit of a sore throat. Uh, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Look what he says. Because she says, well, the Holy, the Holy Spirit, the devil spirit, uh, said that basically they're going to get like a second chance or whatever. Okay. Let's see what he, how the rich man reacts. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Um, why didn't he just say, hey, get somebody to, to go up and start praying for me and praying for me to get out of hell? Uh, he doesn't say that. But Abraham said, Son, remember that Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, gulf that uh, they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Neither can they pass. He's not getting out of there. There's no way for him to get into paradise and get out of hell. And you're going to see the rich man acknowledges that. Then he said, I pray thee, Father, that thou wouldst would ascend him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Um, he knew he's not getting out of there. That's why he's saying, like, send somebody back so I can warn my family. He knew he's not getting out of there. He knew that he's, he's you know, that that's his destiny, his fate, essentially, is hell and then the lake of fire. So say that, oh, he can, he, can, he can get a second chance to accept Jesus Christ. And, of course, this was obviously Old Testament. But still, I mean, doctrinally, it's Old Testament. The reason why I say that is because the perfect sacrifice hadn't happened yet. Hence, why the, the rich man went to Abraham's bosom. Because they didn't go to heaven before the sacrifice of Jesus Christ happened. Again, a whole other subject. But uh, he knew he's not getting out of there. And in, in verse 29, Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Uh... And then he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Okay? Uh, he knew he's not getting out of there. He knew he's, you know, he's stuck down there. So to say that, oh, they get a second chance, it's a, just a blatant denial of what the Word of God says about hell and also about the judgment and about Abraham's bosom and about heaven and about the underworld in general. It just wicked blasphemy for this Jezebel. To come out and say, oh, you know, the Holy Spirit told me this. Let me just show you a few scriptures on the subject that I referenced earlier. Again, this is the corrupt fruit of this wicked charismatic movement. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 22. Um, and it came to pass that when Joram saw Jehu, that he said, it is, is it peace? Uh, and Jehu, and he answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? Nahum chapter 3 verse 4 oh, where's Nahum? Nahum chapter 3 4 because a multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot the mistress of witchcrafts that sell the nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts okay it's that simple um, witchcraft is you know prostitution it's associated it's associated with prostitution it's associated with this Jezebel spirit Revelation chapter 2 verses 20 to 21 notwithstanding I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not behold I will cast her into a bed and then that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Okay? Um, this Jezebel spirit among the charismatic movement is, you know, manifested in this witch, Kat Kerr. It's that simple. And I'll be coming up with more stuff exposing her in the future. Uh, she is the product of this wicked, witchcraft-filled, charismatic movement. So don't be deceived by it. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.